Brioche is a rich, buttery pastry that's a staple in French bakeries. And I love it for its versatility. I started by showing you the fundamentals, that basic brioche dough recipe, and baking that in the classic tins. Then I moved up a level and turned that same brioche into a decadent dessert, tart tropezienne. Now it's time for the grand dame of brioche desserts, a chocolate hazelnut brioche cake. Where the first classic brioche recipe called for plain milk, I still use milk, but this time chocolate milk. Half a cup that's been heated up a little and cooled until it's just above body temperature. I'll add to that a tablespoon of yeast and a tablespoon of sugar. I'll start by mixing the brioche using the paddle attachment. And there we go. I'll let this sit for a minute while I sift the other ingredients. Three cups of all-purpose flour and half a cup of sugar to add some chocolate flavor and, of course, color. A third of a cup of cocoa powder. A half a teaspoon of salt. This recipe has the addition of more eggs, making it more cake-like than the original brioche recipe. Add the eggs and then the sifted dry ingredients. And I'll just mix this on low speed until it all comes together. Now it's time to add the richness. Three ounces of melted bittersweet chocolate, and I'm gonna add it while the mixer's going. Additionally, I'll add half a cup of room temperature unsalted butter. There we go. Now the butter is mostly worked in, but now's the point where I switch to the dough hook, which you see used in making breads. And there we go. You can see that elastic stretch that the dough hook gives the dough. I've got my lightly oiled bowl, and you can see that this dough is a fair bit softer than the first brioche recipe. That is, that added richness and moisture. I'll let this brioche sit out at room temperature for half an hour so the yeast can come to life while I prepare my hazelnut filling. This hazelnut filling is essentially a version of marzipan, which is traditionally made with almonds. But I'm going to start with a cup of toasted and peeled hazelnuts. And I'll grind that with half a cup of brown sugar. To add a bit of moisture, just a single whole egg. And a little bit of vanilla, one teaspoon. Go and the last addition, a quarter cup of milk chocolate chips. It sort of melts and creates almost like a sauce within the cake. Here is the same chocolate brioche recipe, except chilled overnight and you really can feel the texture change. It's a lot firmer than that original brioche recipe, but it does warm up quickly. I want to shape it into a rectangle. It doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle, just the general frame. And now spread the hazelnut filling over the entire surface. The combination of this sweet hazelnut filling and the chocolate brioche cake reminds me very much of those chocolate hazelnut candies, especially the ones you see around Christmas time. Roll this up, and I'll cut this into 16 slices. Oh, look at that beautiful brioche with the hazelnut filling spiraled within it. And now to turn these spirals into a grand cake. The proper pan for the job is a large bunt pan. It's got a lovely detail, and that will show through in the baked version Lay in these chocolate brioche spirals, stacking one leaning on the next. So I've greased the pan and then coated it fully with sugar. This ensures the cake won't stick. Like any brioche recipe, you have to let this sit. It takes an hour and a half at room temperature, just covered with the tea towel. And I have one here that has sat the hour and a half, and it's ready for the oven. Bake it for 40 minutes at 350 and wait for that beautiful fragrance of chocolate and hazelnuts together. Oh, it 
it's always so impressive to see this cake come out of the oven. And it smells fantastic. Now I'm going to let that cool for 20 minutes in the pan. Then I'll turn it out to cool completely. And I have one here already cooled. Isn't that spectacular? And you can see the hazelnut swirls. It slices easily. And a cake like this just needs a simple accent. A classic caramel sauce. You could do a custard sauce. Just a couple of fresh berries. And you've got a spectacular dessert. This is the ultimate in brioche decadence.